Dayton's new police chief, Cameron Afsal, is set to take over in just two weeks on December 20th. He's in town right now getting settled, but took time earlier today to do his first local in-person interview. Tonight, you're seeing it only on Dayton 24-7 Now News. Reading a little bit about your bio, I know you came from Pakistan, early 1980s, settled in the Virginia area, and you've spent almost 40 years of your career in that D.C. metro. Why now? What attracted you to Dayton? A lot of different things. Uh, one was the size of the department. I think it's an ideal size. Uh, growing, growing up in Arlington, it's about the same size as Arlington. So one of, from a selfish perspective, I was one of the, always a desire to uh, be a chief of a department of that size. Uh, Dayton is also very close to my wife's family, uh, where she, they live in Canada right now. It's an 11 and a half hour drive. This is going to be less than six hours for her. So that, that was attractive. And uh, to be honest, some of the things that the department already does and what the city has been doing uh, from uh, trying to re revitalize an area uh, that's been hit by uh, a lot of different issues right over the years, especially with the, the change in the auto industry. I know this was very reliant on that. So I was actually excited to see some of the uh, strategies from the city's perspective to, you know, how to uh, how to bring along and go on into the 21st century economy. Uh, I think that's kind of important uh, from a policing perspective because when a city does things and understands that you need to uh, uplift everybody in the community, I think it has a cascading effects where uh, uh, you know you don't need us as much. Dayton, like a lot of departments across the country right now, uh, police reform a major issue that really brought to the forefront in the last uh, few weeks with, I know you've seen the video, uh, the controversial arrest of Clifford Owensby, really a lot of people saying police reform in Dayton isn't happening uh, as quickly as they would like to see it. What would you say to that? I know, again, you've seen the video and have just reaction to that. I've seen the video. I've seen the video that's been that's on, out in the public. I don't make any. I don't make any comments or, or uh, assumptions about uh, uh, any anything from a snippet of a one minute when interaction was much longer. Um, you know, when I get here, if that uh, issue is still going on, we'll uh, take a look at it. Uh, from police reform perspective, I mean, police reforms have been going on as long as I've been a police officer. So I've been. This is my 31st year. I can tell you that we do things very differently now than we used to do it. Um, you know, once, once I get there, I, I understand some of the issues that, uh, that uh, uh, people are addressing. Uh, I can tell you that in my lifetime, we become more and more transparent. Maybe it's not at the pace that people think, uh, but uh, we, we do policing very differently throughout the U.S., not just uh, uh, where I've grown up. Obviously, once I get here and, and interact with our, uh, our officers here, I'll get a better understanding. I think a lot of the narrative that, that's been going around law enforcement about that we're not caring, that's just not something that's not true. Uh, I'm a minority. I'm a religious minority. I'm an ethnic minority. I'm an immigrant. And uh, maybe I'm blind. I mean, it's possible that I'm just not seeing it. But I have not seen uh, uh, some of the rhetoric that I hear from people uh, that uh, police officers are out to get any particular group. And I'm sure you're aware the FOP had initially thrown their support uh, behind interim chief Matt Carper. Um, D does that pose any challenge, you think? And I should preface this by saying I did talk to the FOP president today who said that they are excited to work with you, get off to a great start. Uh, but coming from a right-to-work state in Virginia, working with a police union, does that present any challenges? Um, it, it really shouldn't. I mean, we're human beings. We're people. Um, I mean, people have a misunderstanding of uh, when you come from right-to-work uh, states. So Virginia actually has a very, very strong uh, uh, code that uh, dictate what we do in in our state uh, that gives uh, officers uh, procedural guarantees right so anything that you do in Virginia has to be in line with that code section so it's not it's it's, it's I think it's stronger it's not just a, an agreement that somebody has it's actually code section so I don't really see that as an issue and and as far as you know FOP uh, uh, giving support to uh, to uh, Chief uh, Carper, I don't have any issues with that. I mean, why wouldn't you want to support your uh, person that you've grown up with? I would do the, expect the same thing. Um, you know, so I, I really have no issues with that, and uh, I, and, and, and appreciate the FOPs. Uh, you know, looking forward to me me coming up there. So yeah, it's it's it, we are people. We're gonna we're gonna work th uh, uh, out things and work through things. I, I don't really don't have an issue with that. What do you think your first order of business is going to be? Understanding and talking to a lot of people. Understanding is one thing to see things from outside and see things from a narrative that somebody else defines. It's a very different thing to actually understand as to how things actually occur and actually work. So uh, in the last few weeks, I've, this is my fourth trip here. I mean, twice for a process and, uh, and this is my second trip to actually just talk to people before, I'm in, before I even start. So understanding how things work on a day-to-day -day basis 
not from somebody else's perspective, but the perspective of the officers and the command staff, I think will be really, really important. And obviously from the city's perspective. So. What are you most looking forward to December 20th? Just transitioning from one place to another place. You know, the, this last few months, the last month or so, you know, trying to make sure that the, the people that I'm leaving behind are going to be in, in good hands. And then, uh, uh, so getting out of that transition and then uh, just, you know, getting into it on a day-to-day -day basis and, and learning the ins and outs of Dayton community, Dayton Police Department, the, the, the City Hall, uh, the community leaders. I mean, it's, it's an exciting time. Great. Thank you for your time, Chief. We appreciate it. Absolutely. And you can watch my full interview right now on Dayton247now.com. Just look for this story at the top of the homepage. <laughs>